You know, like when you used to leave someone a voicemail, they have this little like, literally like note cards that they said note who oh, from yeah, yeah. to. Oh yeah, yeah, little pink metal. Yeah, so, yeah, it's I pink, yeah, it's pink and purple. They're always pink. Yeah, it's yeah. pink and purple, and it's kind of white on the outside. Mm-hmm. And they said they said John C. And it said, "Your parents called and they're coming to see you," which was like, that is like one of the times where where, well, that goes against the thing I thought about myself. In a major way. Like, oh, I thought I was, no one cared about me. I was alone. And what? They both have jobs. They got the grandkids. They got all kind of, they're coming here. This is across the country. They're coming here. And also you got to come for a week for like the family. And I go, my parents are coming. I go, did y'all talk to them? They go, yeah, we, I go, wait, what? They're coming here? They go, yeah. It's like the first time in my life that my parents I mean, I'm one of eight kids. Did they ever spend a week, me and them, a week alone? I was like, that was like the start of like the rebuilding of the whole thing. Welcome to the Kerry Newhoff Leadership Podcast. And I hope this next episode helps you thrive in life and leadership. And if you enjoy it, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. That way you'll never miss a thing. So pastors, I know how difficult it can be to keep your sermons feeling fresh and relevant especially when you're preaching week after week. So whether you're hitting a writer's block or you're in a rush because it's Friday and you're trying to put the finishing touches on your sermon, things don't always go as planned. So to help you, I've created a 10-step preaching cheat sheet. After decades of preaching, I've simplified the whole process of preparation into a series of steps and reminders that can help me and you ensure that our sermons are engaging, relevant, and memorable. Super easy to use. 10 simple prompts with examples, and you can start using it as early as this Sunday. So just go to preachingcheatsheet.com or click the link in the description. You'll get a copy sent to you for free today. Today's episode is also brought to you by Compassion. Words are powerful, but as a communicator, it's far too easy to underestimate the impact of experiences. So when people experience God in a way that is outside their usual rhythms and routines, lives change. That's why I encourage you to bring a compassion experience to your church. It's an interactive way to witness the realities of life for children in poverty and the church's incredible response. Families in your community will see how the gospel is transforming lives around the world and because not everybody can go on a mission trip, you can bring the experience to you. Compassion is currently working with the local church to release over 2.2 million children from poverty in Jesus' name, and I have personally supported them for years. To learn more, go to compassion.com slash carry. And now to today's episode. So John, it's so good to be with you today. It's great to be here, man. Yeah. Peterborough. <laughs> Peterborough, Ontario. Ontario. You're looking at a booming metropolis. Of all the places I would have expected to meet you, it was not here. You probably saw my tour dates and you're like, wait, what? What was Rich? Peter I Brown. think Rich is Rich Birch is here today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think Rich is like, John Christ is coming. You want to go? It's my birthday. And then I thought, well, why don't we try to get an interview? Oh, let's go. Surprisingly, here you we weren't are. consumed by the nightlife. No, so, no, no. <laughs> Where? In Ontario? In Ontario. No. <laughs> exactly. We went to the Morgan Wallen concert. We aren't uh yeah, and then we went home. There you go. Yeah, we we yeah we, it's different now. <laughs> yeah, we tour differently now. But so Ontario, we yeah we didn't know what, we don't know how it works. All the all the restaurants and all the they're they're the same but different. Like Chili's Ooh. has a different name. Home Depot has a different name. Dunkin' oh. Donuts is called Tim Horton. It's all the Correct. same. It's yeah. the same stuff, but it's different names. So it's we don't just know. Different. Yeah, we mm-hmm. don't know where to go or what. To, we just go back to the hotel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to start with your book. So I'll tell you, honestly, this is the most transparent book I've ever read by by someone who I was interviewing Mike Todd, I was telling you before we started rolling. And Mike's book is pretty disclosing. And he said, this is the kind of book that usually guys write when they're 65 and it's all 15 years in the past. Okay, yeah. yeah. You're writing this in real time. And Mike said that or I said that? Uh, Mike said that. Oh, yeah, yeah. he's writing it And time. what I really appreciate about that, because, you know, I'm formulating questions, and I was kind of late to the party on the book. I'm like, I wonder if John has a book. He has a book. <laughs> yeah. And so I read it just in the days leading up to this. And I'm like, you know, do we talk about what happened in 2019? And, man, you don't talk about it. You go there. You dissect oh, it. Yeah. You break it apart. Oh, yeah. You're like, there's nothing left to hide. No, nothing. Not really. Well, there's. it's a, uh, yeah, you could kind of. I don't like to get on the internet 
and kind of t- I talk I speak about it all the time on yeah. podcasts and in my book and in my live show. I mm-hmm. make jokes about it in my live show, but I speak on it on my terms. I never get on Twitter and get into a battle with when I'm when I'm especially if I'm like emotional about something. I would never me and my team, everybody knows that I would never get into anything like that. But I yeah. I speak about it all the time. Yeah, because it doesn't uh you know what I tell you said before we started, but there's a lot of people in that situation yeah. that are kind of like living a double life. Yeah, and I and I can't really because you were like, well, let's talk about that. And I, I obviously I get to spend two hours talking about it, but what I can't really do is recommend and or like this this side quote of life in in freedom and in uh, everybody knowing that everything about you is better. But I didn't choose it Hmm. it was i was outed or discussed you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. it's like Mm -hmm. it's better over here but i can't tell someone to do it because i didn't do it right being like hey you should tell your employer tell your boss tell your wife tell your husband you should be forthcoming i wasn't so i can't get up like and tell everybody here's what you need to do you said something really interesting in the book that really got me so leading right up to the cancellation the manager if i got the sequence right comes to your house, you were home in Nashville, says, we oh, got to yeah. meet in person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I forget what who broke the story. It doesn't matter. Right, but right. They'd been, you know, interviewing yeah. you re- or researching you for six months. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, this is going public tomorrow at 10 a.m. Yeah. Do you want to issue a statement <laughs> or whatever? And you yeah. said something in the book that just made me drop it, literally while I'm reading it. And you're like, by the time that happened in November of 2019, I... If they hadn't broken the story, I think I would have. Yeah, I said that. Remember writing about that? Mm -hmm. What was behind that? Well, it was very... See, as a kid, this is like, it was kind of culminated towards once I got popular, uh, but that was all, it was all just compounded by my whole life. So like, Mm -hmm. when I was a kid, especially growing up in church, like, you know, I remember like, Simple things that like kids would do. Like we had this, it's silly now, but there was like, there was a pay phone across the street from our church. We had a church just like this. Hmm. And cool. it was a pastor's son. So we were there all day, right? And we like, you look back on it now, I was probably 11 and someone told us, I think my older brothers, I don't know if this is graphic for your podcast or not, but hmm, somebody told me about a, a like a 1-900 number. Okay. There was like a sex, like we didn't know, we were... We didn't know. You're 11. We're 11, but my older brother and the, one of the kids from the, they were like, let's go to this payphone and like, call, it's funny story now, but we'd call it and it was like, hey, sexy or whatever. And then we'd hung up and then we ran like back to church. Like we were kids. Mm-hmm. And there were, it was just like, that was so, so bad. Remember, like growing I up, remember. like it was that those kind of your, things. Your childhood was not a lot. I wasn't homeschooled, yeah. Yeah. but like those legalistic attitudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah, familiar yeah. with that. That that you go. God, it was so scary. That was like the baddest, the worst thing we could ever imagine. Yeah. And it was just like it was probably like a phone recording of some <laughs> lady named Lisa smoking three cigarettes in a call center. It's like, yeah, what's going on? But it was we were like we would always like it was so such, such like deviant behavior that we like remember like the next week we want to go do it again mm-hmm. and it was very it was so secretive and it, you look back on like things like that that there was no especially surrounding sex there was no education or no it's just shh, don't do it don't talk about it wait till you get married and then, and then it's supposed to be amazing yeah yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah 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 and that's how we've kind of did all like our whole lives were like that like something you would go i remember going to a buddy's house and you saw like a Sports Illustrated, like swimsuit edition. Again, not, you didn't go look for, and think of me as a 11, 12 year old, like seeing these things and, and also being intrigued and like liking it, but knew it, knowing it's bad. And you're just like, so that grows and grows. And then you get, and then you get popular and then it's kind of more in your face. And it, but it was such, every time I did a show, I used to do, I don't, this is like the first time I've ever been on a church stage, I think since then. Wow. Really? I never. I don't think I've ever been on a Christian podcast. That's a dead serious. Well, here we are. Dude. Here we are. Yeah, in Peterborough. Yeah, yeah. Peterborough. We haven't, we haven't been struck by lightning yet, but yeah. No, I. So it's all. Every time I had a sold out show, 
or, you know, the line, I remember the line being around the block one time to see me and I was, yeah. our green room was looking out over, it had a window and I could see all these people lined up to see me. And I was like, I got to close these shades because I don't, it's so uncomfortable for me for these people have driven hours. I don't, this is, I, I don't understand that really. If then, and also if these people, I thought if these people knew the truth about me, they would all hate me. Yeah. So I can't. I didn't really understand why people were coming to the shows totally, but it just grew so much more and more shame, more and more shame. And that led to more and more drinking. It led to more and more secrecy, hiding. And just like, you kind of were this. And then it kind of just went like that. That's how I describe it. And then I remember there is people would say every time I would do something viral or like successful, these people would come out of the, woodworks and kind of say stuff about me how I wasn't acting very Christian or I was drinking or mm -hmm. things like that with women and I remember I go man which led me even darker into darker more and more shame and then I don't know yeah I don't know who somebody was like re every I don't know how, I don't know quite how it went down really but every time a woman would tag me in a photo or be like this is John Crit they would they would like quiz them on the internet. Like, do you know him? Do you know, do you, have you had any like sexual relationships with him? And they finally dug around for, I guess, six or seven months and found uh, things I was doing that was very, what I would call very, um, not to dismiss it, I guess. I'm a long way past it now, but very, what an average 30 year old guy would probably be doing on the road. But I also was Christian and I am Christian, but I also was performing in church, so. Well, it was there's so much shame involved in it, and now there's not because you're like, you're whoever sent us all those questions. Or like, are you allowed to ask? I go, yeah, dude. yeah. we don't. We can talk about whatever you want. It's, it doesn't hold me in any kind of way, and that's what I wish other people would like could come over to this side of life. What I love about the book, um, a lot of things. It is funny, but it's actually really real. And I feel like yeah. if you had, how long did it take to read a book like that? Four or five hours. If yeah. we sat down for the whole afternoon, yeah. you took us through the story to your childhood, being homeschooled, exactly what yeah. you said, going across the street, calling the 1-900 number. That's in the book? Mm -hmm. I remember that story in the book. I remember that vividly. I can, I know everything about that story. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got a bunch of those. Yeah. So it feels like you're really unpacking what happened and how you ended up okay. living. Like, And you know, I think you said at one point, uh, there are definitely things that you say in the book. Yeah, I should not have done that with women. 100%. I was wrong. I've apologized. Yeah. Yeah. I blew it. But you're like, I got canceled on a sexual charge, and which is weird because this is the guy who's never had sex. Like, right? right? Yeah. Technically, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. Technically. That's, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah. And but I but I didn't. I, I mean, I didn't. Uh, you know, it's it's different about the landscape in 2023 than it was in 2019. That if that same situation would happen to me now I would it was so scary yeah. especially as a Christian like these people that are uh that uh I wouldn't call them attacks because I'd take responsibility for my own yeah. choices they're not uh, nobody did anything but me nobody right right but th they they are like they're all very you know we or anti shame right anti-fat shaming anti-slut shaming anti there but the shame is actually their greatest weapon mm -hmm. is is and and it is today but that's not even in christianity mm -hmm. that's everybody mm -hmm. drew barrymore decides to do her show what the only we have to shame her right ashton kutcher decided that we have to shame is really the only weapon mm -hmm. that we, that's the most powerful weapon yeah. that anyone has on anyone else so once the stuff is in the public there's no shame anymore. There is none because they'll be like, what about John Kurt? They go, yeah, he talks about it and he talks about it all the time. Yeah. It, it just, it doesn't hold much power, but it holds, back then, it was so, it had so, it was so strong. So, and it was, gosh, every phone call from my manager, every tweet notification, every everything was like, because it was just like this, like, and everybody that's not a Christian or, they were like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. It's confusing to them. But mm -hmm. as a believer, mm -hmm. obviously, with a Christian and sex, it's, and celebrity, it's like, that's like the perfect triangle. Yeah. You know? I want to go back a little bit to your childhood. Um, you know, you talk about 
being addicted to your phone, oh, being yeah. addicted to the dopamine. Sure. Because a lot of people who listen to this podcast, watch this podcast, you know, certainly probably not John Christ's level of fame or celebrity or millions of followers. There'd be a few. They haven't made it out to Peterborough yet. They haven't made it to Peterborough that. yet. They but when they do. Peterborough. Yeah, well, talk to us when you do. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like they feel that pressure of mm-hmm. leading the public life, mm-hmm. but also having a private life, yeah. trying to keep it in line. You talk all about being completely addicted to the dopamine rush of likes, virality. What what happened? How did that start? Because I think you do a great job unpacking that. Um, I mean, really, I guess if you go all the way back, every, every, to me, any issue that everyone had, anyone has currently could be tracked all the way back to an initial wound, usually from childhood that you, that if somebody said, if somebody, you know, you're, you're a young girl and your mother says that, that you're, fat or the, your hair, you're going to take that, you're, you're going to take that your whole life. And if somebody says something that, that reaffirms it, you, you like, and then if somebody says, no, you're actually beautiful and you're and that, that can't go in, it, it can't yeah. go in. Mm-hmm. So when somebody, so when you go, um, I'm one of eight kids. And again, all my siblings, I like to say this in defense of my parents that, the messages I received are not the ones that they gave. Fair enough. And I want that to, because that's, that, that's clear, because you know it's unfair to them that I got, I received, I wasn't, that y'all didn't love me. Or, that's not the one they gave. Now I'm an adult now, but I can't, I can see that at the time. So, the, so you get, uh, you got tennis practice. It's a done. I think I talked about this in the book. The t- practice is done at 3.30. Other kids, I'm one of eight kids. Other kids' parents are showing up at 3.15, talking to the other parents, talking to the coaches. It comes 3.30. My parents aren't there. All the kids are getting up. They're getting their bags. Their parents are hugging them. Their kids are leaving. 3.45, my parents still not there. Hmm. Four o'clock, the p- coaches that are waiting with me at the park, waiting for my parents to come. It gets dark. I'm sitting there on the curb. No cell phone. No, And you could probably... Put yourself in these positions to go back because it, it is very, very, very painful. Now, now I'm an adult. I could see it for what it is. But the message that you got that no one cares about you, uh, other people are more important, uh, you're overlooked and you're excluded, that has, I've carried that my whole life. And not, that's not the message. That, that I received that as a child. And so even before I was a comedian, I was I was doing it informally, kind of making jokes or trying to get attention for. Now they'll see me. Yeah, really. Yeah. And I, and I've been going back to that. Well, um, I told, I think I said that, uh, I remember we were at church. My dad is a pastor. And I remember these girls when I was probably again, same age, 11, Mm -hmm. 12, 13, that thought I was so funny. I was so funny. And not that I didn't get attention at home, but I couldn't wait to get to church because they couldn't wait to see me, couldn't wait to see me. And that is like, well, this is, that's a different feeling, right? And I remember trying to be funny to impress them. And it was like that love that I got. And there were friends of mine at the time, but you go, oh, I needed that real bad. And then I, I found stand up, I guess, later, but I've been doing that. I've been doing that my whole life. Yeah. yeah. And everybody kind of a lot, everybody that I know is doing that. That you get this message that uh, I'm excluded, nobody likes me, or I have no value. Like, where'd you get that? Who put that? Like, we talk about our sh- at our show, I usually say, I went to my cousin, my cousin uh, last year committed suicide. My cousin did. And we went to his wet, we went to his funeral. And there's like, 2,000 people there. And I go, okay. Does that make sense? Like, mm-hmm. all right, you thought. You were all alone. Who, t- who, no one told you this. You, where did you get this message that no one cares about you on this planet? No one cares about you. I'm all alone. This planet would be better off without me on it. And then you make a choice like that. And there's 2,000 people here that drove from all over the country, by the way which would have done anything for you, certainly where you were alive. How did that 
Yeah. How, how did that get mixed up? Yeah. One of the things it's crazy. It's crazy to think about, but everybody would relate to it. I would imagine. One of the things there's so much I identified with in the book, John, one of the things you talked about that I thought was really haunting and it rang true, not just for me, but for a lot yeah. of people. And I've had to work through this. I've written about it. It's a it. comedy book. So if you say something it is comedy it's haunting book. is not good, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The emptiness didn't yeah, matter yeah. how full the arena was. Didn't matter how yeah. viral the video went. Didn't matter how many likes there were. There was a hole inside you that was so big yeah. that nothing could fill it. I've been there. Um, I know yeah, a lot yeah. of people, you know, we have pastors listening who are like, well, after the next campus oh, yeah. or after my oh, next, next book oh, yeah, yeah, or yeah, after yeah, the yeah. next series yeah. or when this podcast gets a hundred million downloads, then, then that, yeah. you know, then we're talking. That's Talk the same about, with everybody. I mean, Christianity, yeah. but that's a, yeah, they, they, there is no, I, I think I saw somewhere cause my dad's a pastor. I think I saw like right after the, the church builds the new campus is when the pastor goes, I'm See, good. Is that true? Uh, yeah. Usually within six months. Of the new campus? Of the new campus, a building project, the pastor is gone. That's crazy, mm -hmm. dude. Mm -hmm. That is. And I actually fit into that, to be do. totally oh, yeah. transparent. Yeah, sure, now, sure. we have built a couple of buildings in multiple yep. iterations, but yep. after 20 years, yeah. six months after we opened our broadcast location, yep. tag team to my successor. Wow, yep. dude. And I, and, and I, and I, I don't... It's a, it's a, hu that's a humanity thing, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. But what, what I think a lot of people find disingenuous about the church, which, which I'm included. I think that's what's mm -hmm. important about your story. Cause you're like, I'm, I'm, I'm involved in this is yeah. that like, I went to, I went to Morgan Wallen's concert last night at the Ottawa, wherever the senators play. And he, yeah. it was like, those guys like to play music, but it's very like, we're here to make money and play music and have a good time. And the, it's very, and the more people in here, the, the better I feel, the more, like it's the, the exchange is very clear. Hmm. And like, I would be like in church, like if you asked the pastor, I should, I should, if you asked the pastor, Ooh, hey, right. any pastor that started, do you enjoy, um, explaining the scriptures to people. Yes. Do you enjoy when a couple comes in here that's kind of at odds in their marriage and you your advice or instruction to them can help them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy when a family is having problems with their son or a job and you can help them find employment or help their family bring back together? And do you like explaining scripture? Yes. But also, when you see this place is half full, That makes you feel some kind of way. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. That's uh, so somebody go, okay, you're so you're human? You're human. Good. Yeah. Okay. Let's where do you want to go to lunch? Uh-huh. If you say, it's just like don't don't say that that doesn't get you going a little bit when when they're standing room only. Because you're like, all the glory to God, yes, but also you're human. And that's where the the faith kind of celebrity or performance thing gets a little tricky because they're like, we're all here for God. But also I like to see my single track up on the charts and get to number mm -hmm. one because you're a human. Mm -hmm. And that's also fine to say, but we're not allowed to say that or, or we feel some kind of shame about admitting that. No, but that and, and what's the alternative? You want it to fail? Yeah. You want no one to come? Exactly. <laughs> you you, yeah. you, you want to close the doors? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's a real tension. It's a yeah, because you go, well, I want this podcast to be bigger and better mm -hmm. and great. Because you do, you want to reach more people, and do you have a message that helps people? Yeah, yes. But also, I like to beat the other guys. <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not no, you, that's but honest. I do. But yeah, there's a very yeah. yeah. I like this guy. Church has this many campuses. Mine has this many. I feel better or worse compared to him. That's human. One of my favorite moments was 1998. So I remember that. You wouldn't. But 1998. 1998, the Atlanta Braves. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ted Turner oh. donated a billion dollars to the UN. It was headline news around the world. Okay. And a reporter asked Ted Turner, what did it feel like to donate a billion dollars to the UN? Did it make you feel great? Yeah. He said, well, no. Like, compared to Warren Buffett, I've got nothing. It's like, exactly. 
right? Oh, got it. Exactly. Got it. Got it. I still don't yeah. feel good about myself. Yeah. It's not enough. Yeah. Rehab. You're pretty open, pretty transparent oh, yeah. about, was it four months, Going six months? To, I was in, let's see, four and a half months. Four know. and a half months in yeah. rehab. Well, Arizona so and Hattiesburg. Yeah. Uh, what's funny about what's funny about that whole process is now, I mean, I get I want to say weekly, maybe daily, a message from someone that says, "Hey, my friend, business partner is going through, can you help him?" Right? You can he needs Backs against the wall situation. Right, right. Uh, every, every day. Almost pretty close to every day. Somebody goes, can you, what can, and I remember it was like, so our, our tour, it, I was in so much shame that they go, they asked me, they go, do you want a tour this weekend? And looking back on the story, I don't talk about it publicly much in terms of a he said, she said, I, don't, I take responsibility for my own actions, but it was a very, like a gossip, he said, she said, article. Yeah. And it was, was going nowhere and was irrelevant until I uh, decided to cancel my tour because of it. Wow. That's what got the, because then all the news outlets reported comedian cancels tour amidst because it was like a so you added Christian, fuel it was like to a the Christian, fire. Yeah, th no, all the fuel. Because it was like a Christian, yeah. like a tabloid magazine. Mm. That, like you, if you look at that company's website, their next article is like, is is your lampshade demon possessed in your house? Or like just wild, <laughs> right. wild I, 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 not to knock on that, sure. but just wild things that you're like, oh, this is an insane, this is an insane publication. Yeah. But I was in so much, I mean, I've been kind of going through that for Ever since I got popular, yeah, people, and it was horrible. What was that like? Because your platform kept growing. Oh, yeah. You had just gotten the Netflix special, yeah. which is about as good as it gets. Right about, yeah, right below Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right below Warren Buffett. You got the Netflix special. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden it comes crashing down. And I'll never forget the line in the book. If they hadn't published the story, I think I would have. Yeah. I would have gotten it out there. What, yeah. is it, what was that doing to you? to live in that kind of dissonance between the public front and the private reality? I didn't really, it, I mean, it was horrible. Yeah. It was horrific because I didn't really, it was under, like, I was under a false agreement with those people that were coming into the shows at the churches. It was, right. it was a dishonest agreement. They either, what I said, or basically certainly where I was performing, there were as an agreement of my behavior or that I was, and it's not, it wasn't true. And that's the same mm. with, that's the same with, by the way, if you see like a, um, a fitness instructor or like a nutritionist at McDonald's, you go, <laughs> wait, hold on. You're telling us that we need to have the greens and the juices and you're like, got them. Mm -hmm. Or like mm -hmm. it was big during COVID and all the politicians like you need to wear a mask. And then they were like, we see him not wearing a mask. So it's more of a, it's more of a who you said you were and who you were. It's the hypocrisy, not so much of the behavior or so much of the, it was, it was like, oh, you said you were this and you're not this. Yeah. And that it, faith aside, that goes for, Oh, if you run like a, you, you know, you run a nonprofit and you got a mansion, they're like, wait, you, I thought, mm -hmm. and that, that nobody like everybody, everybody is a hypocrite a little. Oh yeah. So if you see a bigger one, you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, <laughs> it was, um, I think I say after, cause I was like, you know, let's cancel the tour. I don't want to go out of my house. I don't ever want to leave my house again, right? And then that that is what all the national uh, publications, that's all the, that's the- TMZ. That's New the York headline Times. they ran. So, yeah, New York Times, ES, not ESPN, that would be weird, but yeah, that they all ran with, I mean, it cancels tour amidst allegations. So we, looking back and now, I mean, there were so many like comedians that were like getting canceled. Remember, like, yeah. I tried to explain back in 2019, 
There was like executives in Hollywood that were quitting their jobs like in advance. Mm -hmm. They were like, dude, one time in college, I got drunk and a girl came over to my door just for the, and they're like, they're like, hey, it was so scary. And now people are, are that, that kind of era has like kind of come and gone a little bit. Now it always, humans are always going to. I was going to say, and accountability is a good thing. Oh yeah. yeah, You need to have it. Oh yeah. You should. There were a couple of moments that made me break down and cry and they were good moments. Um, your parents show. Wow, this is like Christian 60 minutes, bro. No, yeah. we're going to get to comedy. <laughs> no, Are you cool with it? Are you no, cool I like it? talking about it. I, just, I, 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 I thought about it a long you time. did because yeah. you talked all about oh, it. Yeah, I talk about it all the time. Because uh, I haven't been on any Christian like, like podcast or any, any Christian publications mm-hmm. or nothing. Thank you for coming back. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well thank yeah, you for yeah, coming yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For here. Yeah. I, don't, I don't speak on behalf of Christianity. Yeah, you don't speak on behalf of everybody. You're like, you're welcome back. And everybody's like, no, he's not. Um... Yeah, the day when my parents came. Yeah. So I remember, yeah, I remember as I was at my house. I mean, because it, it was, I was on a walk. I do remember that, like in my neighborhood, which, man, everybody that's been through something like traumatic like that, it's just, you don't know really what, you know. And I'm sitting there, and uh, my sister's there, and maybe my brother. Uh, and then my, um, my sister goes, well, do you want, do you want mom and dad to come up here? Which is like, dude, this is like, this is a, a hole I've dug myself. You know, a lot of times in church, there's a, there's a lot of sympathy and understanding for someone where, where bad things have happened to them. Right. I've, I've. I've lost a job. I got a, a negative health diagnosis. I've lost a child. I, but what about for the one that has done it, has caused it? Or so, so I go, dude, I don't, this is not the time for y'all to come support me. Almost like I don't deserve, like I'm, I dug this grave myself. I don't, I just want to be alone. I want to be, and my parents were, they, the, the first thing that they, maybe even before it even came out, they got in the car and they drove straight out up to Nashville. And even more significant than that, I think, when I was in, this is probably one of the most significant stories in the book, that the first, when you go to rehab, rehab's funny. I think everyone should go to rehab, by the way. Every okay. human should go to John rehab. John Erberg would agree with you. Everybody should go. Mm-hmm. If it, not, nah, it's, it's, the, it's... The 12 it's, steps. On yeah, to spend 30, 40 days out in that, I mean, where I was in Wickenburg, Arizona, just thinking about your life. And anyway, When would you ever do that? When could you ever do that? Uh but the first three weeks are like a blackout, is what they call it. They don't let it know outside. They literally drop you off, take your cell phone, and you're just there. No. And when I was, when the last time I checked my phone, it was like it was all over. I was like, it was all the front page of everything. And that's, I turned my phone off, gave it to them, and went in there. And this three weeks is a marathon to not know. <laughs> that's an eternity. Yeah. And I remember everybody else, all the other guys that were kind of in there would get like, they could use the phone, right? Or they could get letters or they could, and when, whenever you got a letter, they would write your name on the board in a whiteboard. John C is what they would say because they didn't, they didn't no give up your names. identity. No, they said John C. So I remember three, three weeks had gone by and I walk in from breakfast and I see my name on the, I see my name on the the whiteboard and I went to like the um, front desk or whatever the letter got my names on the board. And then she gave me a little, you know, like when you used to leave someone a voicemail, they have this little like, little like note cards that they said note who oh, from yeah, yeah, to. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's pink. Yeah. It's pink and purple. Yeah. It's pink and purple and it's kind of white on the outside. Mm-hmm. And they said, they said, John C. And it said, your parents called and they're coming to see you, which was like, that is like one of the times where, where, well, that goes against the thing I thought about myself mm-hmm. in a major way. Like, oh, I thought I was, no one cared about me. I was alone. And what? They both have jobs. They got the grandkids. They got all kind of, they're coming here. This is across the country. They're coming here. And also you got to come for a week for like the family. And I go, my parents are coming, I go, did y'all talk to them? They go, yeah, we, I go, wait, what? 
they're coming here, they go, yeah, it's like the first time in my life that my parents, I mean, I'm one of eight kids that they ever spent a week, me and them a week alone. I was like, that was like the start of like the rebuilding of the whole thing. Cause you go, which is like really the message of Jesus. Yeah. I mean, I don't like to get to, I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk on those things anymore, but he goes, that's it. He goes, Hey, goes, Hey, you're cool with us. You're like, wait, what? Or, Hey, this, this is a, you don't deserve, you shouldn't be treating this person like this. this is a human being. And you're like, what? It goes against everything that you, the messages that you received about yourself. And then those, that kind of is where it started. And then of course my family all came, then I would get a stack, dude, a stack of letters every day. Like if you're in rehab, everybody's listening direct. John, we never been to rehab, but if you're, if you're ever in rehab, like you get a letter, it's like being in jail, kind of mm-hmm. not, I don't want to compare it. Cause they were like, oh, I've been in jail. It's different. Sure. You get a letter is a significant day to get a letter. And every day, every day from the three weeks on, I would go, I was like, my name's on the board. And there was a stack of mail this big for me. And it was all, I don't even know, did, I don't even know how these people got my name or, or maybe my management sent, they sent it to my office and they kind of looked at them and sent them to me. So it, it kind of went through somebody, and then, but it was like all these people that were like, we, everybody's story was exactly the same. I burned my life down 20 years ago. I lost my job, got a DUI. Uh, cheated on my husband, uh, and they go. We know. We know how you feel now. We know because I know it. I felt it, and we know. Just don't really. Just a little honest, but like, just don't kill yourself. Just stay on Earth, and that. And I see like. It's funny now because I see people go through that all the time. What I the same type of. And I either reach out to them or if I know them personally, I call them pastors. And a lot of them reach out to me. They're like, dude, what's up? Or like, I go, just don't, we'll figure out life and we'll figure out, just don't, just stay on earth. Just stay on earth. I went through a period a while ago now where I burned out. Yeah. That was sort of the hinge point of my life. Yeah. Awful. It got suicidal for yeah, about a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you struggle with that? Um, all right. Well, somebody said that it is, is like a, uh, I did, I did, I didn't not, not in a way that like, uh, mostly like practically, like I was like, you know, if, if, if a tornado came through this place and wipe, I wouldn't care. Okay. Or if this plane went down, I wouldn't fight it. Yeah. Not Cause there's a different in rehab. Mm-hmm. It's such like, it's such like an extreme situation where they're like on a one to 10 scale. They were like, how bad do you want to, are you, do you have any su- suicidal ideations? Yeah. Do you have any plans to do that? Do you have, it's like rate yourself. Cause when somebody says I didn't want to live, that could be minor depression towards yeah. like actually walking up to a bridge and like, looking. there's a lot of levels to that, but I don't want, I, I feel like sometimes that I would, if I, I do feel that way and you, that I would use that as a way to like garner sympathy or to get people back on my side. It, that is true. But if you're like, dude, I, I'm lucky to be alive. It's like, all right, well, you still got to take responsibility for the choices you made. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's like wild to talk about all this because I feel like I haven't talked about it ever. I don't mind. I talk well, about thank it. Thank you for being so I talk about it privately all the time. Yeah. I talk about it privately all the time. But yeah, I feel like I have this conversation probably daily with somebody at some at some level. But yeah, it's, a, it's like a lie. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. So you quote Tim Keller, which I love. One of my favorite yeah. theologians and my favorite definition of the gospel. You have a more amplified version that I have memorized. Oh, yeah. The one that I memorized is fully known, fully loved. Yeah. Most of us feel if people really knew me. Yeah. They wouldn't love me. Yeah. And in order to get people to love me, they can't know me. Yeah. Hence, partial disclosure, yep. the hidden life. Yep. You open with that, you close with that. And yep. if your best friend, and you have a lot of friends, looked at you now and described your life now, and then looked back at you in 2018, 
before all yeah. this went down? What differences would they see? They, they wouldn't see a different. It's a different person. Yeah. They wouldn't even know that's the same person. Wow. And not not in like a better. Or I don't know. It's, it's, I'm a different person. I'm a different person. I mean, I still probably got the same sense of humor, but <laughs> thank goodness. It's like I was talking about this yesterday with yeah. with somebody. And you're like, and whatever. I wouldn't call it addiction. Whatever you want to call it, just in your own spiral, just in your own like. My sister, who I would say is one of my best friends on earth, that we had worked together for a long yeah, time. Yeah, she was on your management mm-hmm. team. Yep. Yeah. And uh, she was, da- at the time, 2018, 19, she was dating a guy that she was really interested in, like, marrying. Yeah. And, like, he, they both lived in Nashville. I also lived in Nashville. And, that, and you don't have these kind of thoughts until you get to – my treatment or whatever. And I go, I was sitting there one day. It's like sitting there one day. This is like how the the healing process like happens. I go, I think I told her this. I go, did you know it's crazy? This is my sister who I love more than everybody on the planet. Interested in a guy here in town. I never once like took him to lunch or thought even... I'm an older, protective bro. I never want, that never even was in my mind. And then you go through kind of a little bit of like healing and you go, oh, oh. Like that, I didn't even, that did, they say, are you a different person? It didn't even register to me to do that right. because I was in so much like, I would say pain, but looking for my own affirmation and silence my own demons that I couldn't even See, if there was somebody on our bus, on our tour bus, that was like going through some, I wouldn't even have known. I wouldn't even, it didn't even, I would wake up and I would have such, these needs were so great. I was on the road to getting them met Hmm. and I didn't care about anything else. I didn't care about it. And, and that it's like, that was all. And now I still, I still, I, I'm still, I still want to get them met, or I'm not. I'm, yeah, I don't like when people say like I'm bet. I'm I am better, but I don't. But I think I said the other day, I go. I've been in a relationship for a while now, probably a year and a half, and I told my girlfriend, I said, um, "Hey, the what was it? Or I think it was something about something professionally." I go, "Man, we we just opened with our tour and." Uh, in a certain market, uh, tickets are low, selling low or something like that, or in, in once one of the markets or something. Or we, maybe we added a second show and it wasn't full or something like that. And I go, I just want to know, I just want to let you know that this doesn't, it makes me feel sad. Oh, and, and oh, as one of, uh, I went to one of my buddies had a comedy show who would be, like you said, considered the Warren Buffett, like would be considered more successful than me. Yeah, yeah. This is like, and I told my girlfriend, I go, we went to his show and I know him, kind of. I, we have like, mm. like we know each other, but not. Yeah, so, we're, not, we're not hanging Yeah, out. so I, I went with some buddies and I was like, he's my buddy. And I texted him, I go, yo, we're at the show. And he goes, sounds good. Good to, can't wait or something like that. Like, it's funny because he had to like, Hey, come back and say hi. Or, and he didn't. Mm-hmm. And you're kind of on the left hanging. Yeah. And I just said, I just want to tell, I just want to, I was talking to my girl. I was like, that just made me sad. Mm-hmm. It made me, because that is, again, a doubling down of the child that we don't care about you. Wow. Because it, 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 it calls back to the old thing. And I go, I know what this is. It's, it's just like a kind of like a little bit of it, that. It's kind of been scarred over, but it's like kind of a little bit of a, I, maybe I'd assumed I was better friends with him than I was, or I go, Hey, we're here. And then afterwards, I, afterwards I texted him. I go, dude, awesome show. That was great. And then he's like, sounds good. (laughs) And it was, it's so silly. It's, it's dumb. I get it. That's dumb. It's so dumb. But I was like, Oh, I thought he was going to be like, I can't believe you're here. And that's, and, and dude, you verbalize that to someone else? They go, yeah, dude, that sounds sad. Mm-hmm. I would be sad with that too. I would, I understand you, that, I get it. I wouldn't understand that. Yeah. But you feel like you can't say that. 
So then you just keep that in, right? And you just kind of, and then it happens again, or you post a video that doesn't get the views, or you don't just be just like, man, I thought this was going to go different, and it doesn't. And also, I think I they told my girlfriend that story, and she goes, I, that, I'd be sad about that too. Hmm. Or, that makes sense. And also, it makes me emotional to talk about it. She goes, that makes sense. And I go, oh, that's it? And she goes, yeah, well, you want to go to dinner? Or something? We yeah, kinda, yeah. Really, we yeah. kind of just like, all right. Yeah. And it is sad, but it's not the end of the world. I just like go, oh. But if I just like keep pushing that, like those things that, because I, I go, when something doesn't go well in my career, I go, I want you to be a part of this sadness yeah. and defeat, because when we win, it's going to be so much more. We're going to celebrate together. Yes. Because yeah. every time you won, pre-2019, it seems you ended no up in celebration. a hotel alone. Yeah. No celebration. Depressed. Yeah. Drinking too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of the things I appreciated is you're, you know, certainly at the end of the book, you're very transparent. You're like, at the time you wrote it, you were sober for two years. Still am. Still are. Coming okay. up on four. I didn't want to make that assumption. Yeah. No, but you're like, see, coming up on, yeah, November will be four. Four years. Yeah. Well, and congratulations, Thank but you're you. also saying, at some point I might not be. I might decide I want yeah. a glass of wine or a beer. Yeah. Right? So I don't want to set myself up. Yeah. Like, here's this veneer yeah. of a perfect human. Yeah. And now, that was then, this is now. Yeah. Probably going to make a mistake again. Mm -hmm. That was love. very, like, fully known, fully loved. Fully known, fully loved. Fully known, fully loved. Well, because I thought about that. I thought about, about, I am sober, but I go, all right. If I, like, now, you can talk about it in the book within context of, like, and I talk about it now, but, like, all right, if I make myself the like sober guy yeah. or I make myself, that's part of my thing. I'm the whatever guy. If I have a drink, it's going to be in the closet. Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. because I said, look, I just was up on this pedestal. I got knocked off of, it's nice to not, everybody goes, yeah, we, I don't drink anymore. That we, we saw John like drunk. They were like, yeah, we knew that. Yeah. 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 We knew he was, this isn't, Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you go, all right, if I set myself up to be this like. Perfect guy. Then all my I, mistakes are in the past. If I do, yeah. If I do mess up, I got to go back in there. Mm -hmm. The proverbial, I got to go back into hiding. And I go, I'm not trying to go back in there. I've been in there. So if you, if you, if I have to have an honest conversation with my girlfriend about something, I go, hey, this is. I'm not going into hiding. There's no, I'm not having a, hey, we need to talk about, I'm not. What, but what it's hard to do. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't. I I also feel some kind of way about sitting at a church telling. I feel some kind of way about like good or bad. Like I'm not advising anybody on how to like live or I don't know. I feel, but that's probably my own shame. Probably, probably a lot of people have. A, it would probably help a lot of people, but I feel like I'm unqualified or something. It's probably still from my own. Shame's been a big part of it, and I think it is for a for lot everybody. of leaders. Yeah. There's still too much shame in my life. Yeah. I think about what I do, and of course, it's the opposite of pride, and then you set yourself up, and yeah. you fall down. What have you learned about shame, John? Dude, it's so, it's so, it's so, pow it's so powerful. Like, yeah. the, it, the, the, it's like a weapon, dude. The, sh the weapon of, like, like, I remember at the time, everyone was going, Oh, dude, like it was a lot of shame was, was the only like weapon that anyone had and you can use it against other people. And there's, it's like, once it, it like the first, the first, I remember the day that article came out and everybody read it and it was like, it was, it was like, man, did I slept like a baby, bro? Cause I was like, well, now they know. I don't know what the, I don't even know if I'm ever going to tell a joke again. I don't, I don't, or nor do I care really, but at least I don't have to, I don't. And then everybody, what's crazy about shame is like everyone publicly, I was just getting crushed, but dude, privately, I, which I always say this, I go, dude, the, whatever you call, I was going to say the local church of the, be a Christian term, like the body of Christ or whatever you call that, yeah. it saved my life. 
Wow. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. Wow. Publicly, I was getting crushed, but privately, just I felt I make the analogy that I was like just laying and they were just like, I was like, they were just like, like keeping my like body alive or something like that. That guys, I couldn't it, like, dude, so many people were like, I don't want to put a, anybody's name out there, but all anybody, everybody was privately texting me. People that didn't even have my number. They were like, dude, we love you. Anything we can do for you. If you need a place to stay, if we, so many people offered to like pay for treatment. Now publicly, you couldn't really come out and, yeah, especially as a Christian, I understand, I know, but it was like privately, privately, Christians, namely led by my parents, but saved my life. A hundred percent. I think you were in Hattiesburg. They let you go to church, which was a privilege. <laughs> Do you remember that day? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and oh, yeah. you got to church, and there was a meet and greet time. Yeah. My absolute least favorite moment in any service. They anywhere. don't do those anymore, man. Well, I, I'm, that's a that's a Is progress. It that's COVID. progress. Is it because of COVID? I don't know. Because of social they intelligence. Don't do it in my church. I don't know, I don't know um, why they don't do them anymore. Yeah, they don't so do meet and greet. Tell us what happened. That day. Well, the, all right. So that was the first time when I went to. When I went to treatment, they were like, you can't, there's, it was like an all men's facility. Yeah. And they were like, there's no alcohol here or there's no, and I go, okay. Yeah. I wasn't addicted to any of that. I go, all right, I, what? I went like, there were some guys in there that were hard off, like trying to, yeah. and I go, they were like, you can't. They were shaking. Yeah. Yeah. I go, I don't know. I don't. Not really quite sure why I'm here, really. I mean, I, I got, yeah, I, I was not, I was, I didn't want to live, so I needed, I knew I needed some help, but I was like, I'm not really addicted to anything. And, and I remember the, there was the family weekend. Remember when my parents came? The family, that was the first time people from not on the campus came. And my buddy Mike, we've talked about this story before, his wife came to family week. And we were sitting at the cafe or we were walking out, I remember. And she goes, hey, I just want to let you know that I love your videos. And it was like, whoo, straight into the veins. Right? I go, oh, that's what I'm addicted to. Wow. Really? So I go, you knew oh. that was your addiction. But I never knew before that. I go, I, I, I didn't know what I was actually looking to. And that's what my addiction is. Although, by the way, still mm. is that. It You're was, addicted to the, fame. No, the no. affirmation, the love, the, affirmation. the, the attention, okay. the the and and you can, and you can kind of, if you can kind of, I tell any like artist or creative, like you can like box up your personal life enough to like be on the road and not become an alcoholic. You can be a successful musician, but it you know what I'm saying. If you can have people that you're honest with, that you can kind of no no artist would be great without that. That's also part of it. But that's when I first knew, oh, this might be. That's your heroin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so well, I remember I pulled into Hattiesburg there in, and there was this big like mega church, like this big, like this big, like North Point ish yeah. type place. And I go, no, and I never, we, I never, and I had been gone for two months. No one had, and, and I like, I like, Manipulate. I was so angry at God. I didn't know. I didn't want to go to church, but I wanted to. I wanted to be seen. I wanted to be. And so I go. I manipulated. Yeah, I manipulated the whole. I was like, well, Sunday morning is really. I need to. And they were like, you want to go to First Baptist down? I go, no. I want to go to Mega Church. Yeah, yeah, yeah I want yeah, someone yeah, to recognize yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm being honest. I mean, it's silly looking back yeah. on now, but I go, no. I want to go to. Uh, I made up some. It's a lie. That is a lie. To be like. And or manipulate the situation so I could go there, and everything that I thought was would happen there happened there. That everybody was like, oh, like the like the the whatever the greeters and the thing, and they were like, like John Chris is here, and they like <laughs> they were like, and then everybody was like, can we get photos? And then like all the other guys that was I was in treatment with were like, what? And they was like, they were going back went in the facility and talking about how it was all. It was like, and I didn't need. I didn't need that. I didn't need, if you said you can never talk to a, a girl anymore, you can never have alcohol. I'd be like, oh, fine, dude. Yeah. 
I, now that was the kind of like maybe a byproduct of the attention I liked to, from women, but I was mm-hmm. like, dude, I don't, I'm good. If I can get that. So we would, they would teach me things. This is like a very, very practical. They were like, dude, when you go out to like a, when you go out to a, like a restaurant, like sit in the booth facing the wall. Yep. And I go, well, I subconsciously, like I remember, I think I talked about in the book that one time we'd always go out. Like once you get three months in, you can then start. Yeah, you get a few privileges. Yeah, they'll let you have your phone back or they'll let you go out or whatever. And I remember I would be like that one time, one of the guys said, oh, well, we're just going to probably like order pizza tonight. And I was so bummed, dude. <laughs> I was like destroyed. <laughs> I could go out. Cause I was like, oh dude, I thought, cause every time I went out, yeah. it was like a, a, a situation, which was awesome. Speaking from my own insecurities. And I was like, oh, this is my, and they told me, they told me, they was, I said, I made a joke in the book. I go, my only person to rehab is banned from church. Cause they're like, you can't cause they knew church. it was your crypto. Oh yeah, right? dude, that's they're it. Like, yeah. We can't, they're like, you're banned no, no, no. from church yeah. and Chick-fil-A. We couldn't go to Chick-fil-A because it was always, I would create a stir in there too. Right. And they were like, we're going to go to Popeye's. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> But there was hilarious. also a meet and greet. Hilarious. Where you, somebody turned around and asked you, what are you doing here? Yeah. And you said, I'm going golfing with some buddies. Oh, yeah, yeah, Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, uh-huh. And then what happened? Yeah, because they said, because we weren't allowed to, because for confidentiality, you're with yeah. three other guys in rehab that they're all doctors or they're there too. So you don't want to go, I'm in rehab. Like, wait, that's, I know, I know him. Yeah. So I could, think I said, I think I said, what did I say in the book that I was, I remember saying. Say, you're here with some buddies. I said, I'm playing golf. For the weekend. Yeah, that's what I would say. I'm playing golf. Yeah, that's what I would always say. And then they were like, no, you're not. They're like, you're in Hattiesburg. You've been in Hattiesburg for a month. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a big, re- it's a big uh, recovery community down there. Yeah. So I think people in that community, I just did a show in Hattiesburg like a month ago, which was crazy to be back. And I was like, the, this city same thing saved my life dude that everybody was like dude he's like kind of like we know what you're doing down here like good to see you man congratulations like you're working on it he's like pastors were like give me their number dude if i can do anything for you a bunch of people came out and said listen i'm recovering from a drug addiction i'm recovering from a sex addiction remember that yeah yeah, yeah. and i thought if that was church yeah do you know where the church would be (laughs) Oh, Do you know where the church such, would yeah. be if we could all come clean? Yeah. If we could all just say, hey, I'm Carrie. So do you know that Kyle Eidelman? Yeah. I was, I was, so in, I was switching that timeline. That was, that was in, uh, in uh, Arizona. That was Arizona. The I first time we went to church. Yeah. And yeah. they go, it was like Wickenburg, Arizona, which is. Nowhere. You wouldn't. This is a pretty rural church. If there was a visitor, you'd be like, how'd you get here? What? You didn't just drive in here, or like it, you would. You, somebody did you know about it? Did yeah. someone tell you about it? Is are you uh, affiliation from the there? You don't like, and this church is in the middle of nowhere, and there was all these like. You would come to, and then I go, I go, I yeah, I'm here to play golf, and they go, oh, there was, it was two girls, and they go, oh, you're here to play golf. I go, yeah. She goes, we're at uh, the Meadows, which is the treatment facility. Like, we're at the Meadows. We're at the eating disorder clinic there. That's the first thing I said to me. I was like, what? <laughs> and this guy goes, oh, yeah, dude. He goes, I'm in the uh, um, the relationship trauma unit. He goes, dude, and I'm an alcohol program. We all shook hands. And we go, oh, good to see you. Dude, yeah. We all sat down. I'm like, I saw that. That's crazy. I, thought, dude, I forgot about that. That is amazing. I forgot about that. It was like, awesome, dude. And I yeah. thought, that's, that's what the church would be. So yeah. I interviewed Kyle Eidelman. This seems to be a theme this fall. On the podcast. Yeah. And we ended up, I've got not gotten to a single question I was going to ask you, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. So thank you. get to him. Interesting enough, Kyle, Kyle, his buddy is like, you know, talking to him after his three-month sabbatical. Sure, and sure. he's been yeah. on the record about it. And Kyle says to his buddy, he goes, you know what? At least I didn't have a moral failure. And his buddy turned to him and said, Kyle, you know that's wrong. You are a moral failure. That's crazy, dude. And I'm like, a moral failure is absolutely. crazy, dude. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, we've yeah. created this line. At least you didn't have a moral failure. Which we've everybody created knows, this yeah, line. Yeah, I'm a moral yeah, failure, yeah, John. Yeah. Like every, every, every human that walked on this every moral. human being. And I'm like, that yeah. is so At least liberating. Moral, yeah, that's like a Christian term. Like I know it what is. a, mor- it is. a moral, it's moral failure. I know what that is. Yeah. So I cheat. It's not cheating on your taxes. Right. Not cheating on your taxes. Which that is a moral failure. It's not like being mean to your wife. You know. Or it's not like you know being cruel to a friend or something like that. I like. I like. 
like pastors, whatever that is. It's I like, like all the pastors whenever they 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 lose their job because they're too too aggressive with their staff. I go, that's not it. Okay, yeah, or they're too like they're like he's a bad, he's a bad leader. I go, all right, well, there's something else. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, I, yeah. It's like I think I was talking to a friend. And they, because everybody's like very open with me about these things somehow, because I was like, listen, I, I, and they were like, my dad, was it a dad? They had a moral failure hmm. at the church. And then they go, she go, well, he, they moved to a different state and took a, I go, and took a job there as a pastor. And I go, dang, did that my heart kind of, my shoulder, they go, ah, because then now you're taking the thing. Mm-hmm. You're taking it with you, and you go, and I hope they never find out about that. Yeah, that's what you're doing. And you go, this went bad. Whatever the moral failure was, it went bad. Instead of like being like, hey, you're kind of massaging it with words, and then moving, and then said, God told me to come God over told, here. God, I have felt a call. Yeah, yeah, and here you are. And yeah. I go, that's great. I go, no, it's not great because he's still bringing the shame with him. And he, and he has to also pick it up and put it on each and, and carry it with him. Yeah. And did I know, I know a friend of mine that go, that she, I mean, she's in her forties and she like slept with a married man that is a, either like a family friend of their parents or something like that. And she goes, and we, she's had honest conversations with me. She goes, I'll never tell my parents about that. I'll never tell my parents and I'll never tell anybody. I'll take that to my grave. And I go, and granted, there's situations and ever, that maybe it's not appropriate, but I go, what's sad to me about that is that you think if you tell those people, they're all going to hate you. Or, so then you got to carry that. You have to carry that to your grave. Hmm. You know, that seems like a, that seems... To, and I go, give me, I was joking. I go, give me your phone right now. I'm going to call your parents. And tell, no, I, I, of course, I would never do that. But I go, it's, I bet it's not. It'll, it'll feel a lot better when it's out in the open. And my, 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 I was. My, who cares? Not who cares. It was, uh, but I go, I don't know. Now I'm free of it. Hmm. And I go, dang, I wish, that's what I wish for people, I think. I go, man. One of the fears, I've had this conversation more than once in leadership, and it's not always after a, quote, moral failure or that kind of thing, but just somebody... Can we title that, the podcast, that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the moral failure. <laughs> um, but it's it's like, you know, I needed to go to counseling 20 years ago because my wife told me I had to go to counseling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things are going really well at the church, so I thought. I right. would do them differently now, but we were growing oh, yeah. like crazy. Oh, yeah. My wife's like, this is getting really hard. Putting up good numbers. Putting up good Putting numbers. Up good and one of the fears I've had, and I've talked to numerous leaders about this over the years, they had the same fear. If I go and get healthy, mm-hmm. I'm going to lose my edge. Oh, yeah. I'm going to, like, the thing that makes me great at what I do yeah. is going to disappear. That's, yeah, that's crazy. How is comedy for you on the other side? That, I mean, every uh, 10 times better, 20 times better. Really? How so? Well, that's another one of those things where you do, where, where, who'd, who'd, where'd you hear that? That were, what? I mean. Yeah, I, I think it's like shame. Yeah, right? it's like, like dude, if you get, you're not going to be as competitive or you're not going to be as, yeah. dude, it's so much more like, if you're a pastor, if you got, it would be so much more honest. Because mm-hmm. think about, think about a pastor who I did, I was at a church that they had, this is not, they had a $22 million mortgage on the building. Dude, a $22 million mortgage, okay? So just by nature of that, you're not getting the truth. I mean, you're not. No. Because, you, dude, if, if, if people in here leave, we cannot have people leaving here. We cannot. Because we need these numbers to, so like, You look back at the New Testament where Paul was like, hey, listen, I don't, all these letters like, dude, you guys are screwing up. You're not being honest. You're hypocrites. You're liars. And they would even encourage him. But he goes, I don't, I'm not taking money from y'all. I don't live here. This is the truth that y'all need to hear. And if you have that, if you have $22 million 
and 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 a Tesla and a lake house, you're not you're wanting to fill that place. And but if you got all the counseling and therapy and you were honest with yourself, and I go, man, it feels good to it feels good to have five thousand people in my congregation. But if you were a one hundred percent healthy, you'd be like, if forty five people, forty five thousand or forty five hundred were in here and there were some empty seats in the back, it wouldn't buy, it wouldn't shake my ego. And now you could then tell them the truth about what they needed to hear versus such like a, so like scary to tell. I mean, but the, the model of the church is built in that kind of way. And some of churches are healthier than others. I don't know. Yeah. I don't no, to say. there are. You can talk on that, not me. Well, but I go, there's a lot here, of healthy with $22 churches. $22 million mortgage, you're not hearing the truth. And there's that's a fact. lot of unhealthy churches. Yeah, and that sure. always, doesn't always get disclosed. But either. that's the same with business. That's the same with everybody. Yeah. 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 So we will talk about comedy. Anything else you want to say? On the personal side, ah man, I mean, I, I, it's it. Well, it's nice. So, like the what I do now is like any any what I, what I feel the most kind of not sadness or or like I think of somebody now all the now all the personal relationships I had with them that's between me and them. And, and apologies and making amends and with and a therapist. And you detail some of that in the yeah, book. Yeah, you've, yeah, you've gone yeah. and done the work. But outside of that, as a public figure, I was like, oh, like what makes me, not sad, but what what I kind of have, I was going to say grapple with, that's like a Christian term, uh, is like I think about Facebook, which is how my career was built, right? And I think about a mom in, you know, America somewhere who discovers me and all these videos are speaking to her directly and the and the 250 people that she knows and loves the most this is her community social media is very powerful like these are all the people the family mm -hmm. the uh business the people at church these are all of them and they gave of their platform for me they share all of, that's how my career is built yeah. people sharing this look hey this guy's hilarious. Yeah. This speaks to me. Oh my goodness. My trip to Disney was like this. I love this guy to all of your closest friends, right? And as a Christian, and we didn't have any agreement, but but unconscious, subconsciously we did, that I was behaving in a certain kind of way or that they thought I was a certain kind of person because I was making these jokes. And for that article to come out and then somebody go, dang, that was my guy. Man, I love that guy. And and that, that and that's a kind of embarrassing situation for somebody that was was like my biggest. I love this guy. And sharing with all, and I take I don't take that lightly. And that's a bit that's a bit for people now that have like the same thing, like that to share my stuff and that my shows now are bigger than they were before. And it's it's like I, I share stuff on my that I believe in. It's like, oh, it's just social media. It doesn't matter. It's like, no, it does matter. And I could also see why, like, we talk about, like, if you met a, like, when you first go into rehab, the funny thing about rehab is you go, man, this is all BS. I don't need to be here. Like, it's like in Shawshank. You go, I don't yeah. deserve to be here, right? They got, they got the, they got the, it mixed up. They got the wrong guy. Yeah. I'm in, right? And then... You sit there for like a like a month listening to all these, you know, therapy and group sessions and talking about your childhood and you go, Oh, I could see how I could have probably been more clear with that woman. I, you know, and then you think about a situation where where let's say you're a Christian woman, right? You come up in church and let's say like your Dad leaves your mom, right? So you have this kind of wound there. And I'm just, this is just conjecture. And then you go, you date this guy that's a Christian at your church, and he either cheats on you or is lies to you or you get hurt, right? And then I show up on the scene, and I'm complimenting you. And I'm famous, by the way. And I'm going, and so somebody could think, oh, this guy is going to right all the wrongs of my childhood that men have maybe dismissed me or set or or have chosen other people outside of me or have hurt me but this guy is a christian celebrity we're going to be 
married or whatever, and he's going to, and this is going to, all the hurts, just like mine, all the stuff, this is going to fix it. Yes. And then I turn out to be the same kind of guy. Yeah. I could see why they were mad. Not, not to cancel culture. And I, I don't, I don't dis, I don't agree with putting somebody out publicly, but I go, yeah, I get that. I get it. We're true, which is like, and that's all the, by the way, the, the race issues. And you go, you can do, agree with whatever you want, but you go, oh, I can, I see why they're upset. I maybe disagree, but I see why they're, I can understand why they're protesting. Yeah. I can understand why they're marching. Yeah. You, you talk about empathy yeah. being sort of this, this new emotion, position, um, discovery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you hinted at yeah. it a little bit. Yeah. Um, I just want to encourage people who are watching or listening to please read the book. There's a, oh, it's against, I thought you were going to say there's a phone number below to donate money or something. No, no, like, no, 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 no. The perfect time, no, no, no. Get him in yeah, with the emotions. Send the, hey, we got a prayer cloth. Mm -hmm. Wait, nah, just, yeah. Yeah. Nah, just No, read yeah. the book because, yeah. I mean, we've done 90 minutes on yeah. this or so, but the book goes into even more detail. And yeah. before you make a negative comment, Read the book. Oh yeah, it's like I like. I'm I'm very proud of it. Yeah, yeah, very. Proud it's of an it. excellent yeah. book. Yeah, I, I, I kind of uh, read it just to check it off the list, and then yeah. I got into it, and I'm I like, know, oh, this is good. actually really good. Yeah. <laughs> well, and so transparent. I think the uh, man when you go in there, when you sit in those, so like in rehab, somebody new comes in every day, about just about every other day, sure. right? And there was a guy that came in there, by the way, that. He worked at a church. He worked at a church. And they found out about, I think he was running around his wife or something like that. And then, and then they, they sh he went to church to work. They had a bag for him and confronted him. And he go, if you go to rehab right now, we know about everything. If you go to rehab right now, your bag is packed. We'll, we'll pay for it. And we see him six hours later. Think about that. And that guy walks in with his khakis tucked in with a, like walked in with his outfit. Like with his, with his work clothes that, on. From that day. Mm -hmm. And he's now in treatment. Is nuts, dude. It's, I mean, dude. And you sit there and everybody kind of, after first maybe three, four, five days or something, tells their story, right? Tell you why you're there. And you go, I mean, dude, there's people in there that have, I mean, overdoses and abuse, uh, like causing abuse, not receiving abuse and dr dr addiction and all kind of horrific behavior. And I'm telling you, dude, the reason I say that with about the empathy is that like every person, and I, I sat through a hundred of them, more than that, every single person in the horrific, horrific I can't tell you the depths of human depravity that I witnessed hearing those and every single one of them. When they tell it within context of their entire life, you want to put your arms around them. Every person, every person. Now, if they now, if they can't really get to the broken down, because I know some mm -hmm. people that have, mm -hmm. you know, some people pastors system or that have moved on and they're they're not really they haven't come undone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If they like if. If whoever you hate the most, let's say Hillary or 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 Trump, whoever, mm -hmm. if you if you if they could be, I don't know them personally, but they were like, hey, if Trump was like, man, when I was like a kid, like I really wanted my dad's like approval and love. There's a story there, sure. And, I bet there, and my dad. Now I don't know if he could get there. I don't know him, but mm -hmm. like he goes, yeah, and I really wanted to. Um, he was. He seemed. I. I had a lemonade stand when I was a kid. My dad took a lot of interest in that. I'm just making this up. I don't yeah, know what it's yeah, yeah. And it was cool to see my dad take an interest. And then like, I was kind of went to school and nobody really. And then I started the, you know, beta program. And I like, I was like in charge of this stock game and it was fun. And I got an A in the course. And then I, then I graduated and I was like business school. And then I was at the top. It kind of just snowballed. Yeah, and then he goes, and then I got all the way to the top of business, and that really wasn't it. And so then I joined, uh, whatever that, you're fired. What's that show? Oh, yeah, uh, Celebrity Apprentice. Then he's like, he's mm -hmm. and then I was like, I thought maybe that was it. And then I was like, that didn't really solve it for me. And then I was like, the president, and I got all the way up here, and I'm still kind of like, 
taking shots at people because I'm like, dude, you're the pre- you got all the way. This is it. <laughs> if you don't have if if if, if the hole isn't full for this guy, we're ho- we're hopeless. But if he could say honestly, man, all this kind of you'd be like, ah, dude, let's go. Let's go get a coke together. So, no, I don't. I don't know the, those. But you're like every know, you every mean. person. Mm-hmm. St- when you and you go, man, I was doing this. I mean, dude, there's horrific stories about, but from childhood wounds that they were trying to meet. And you go, man, that what makes me sad is that somebody in such pain on the road, an artist or something, they're like, dude, honestly, honestly, alcohol. Somebody's an alcoholic. They're like. If they have a, this is the best tool they have mm. to deal with this pain. This is a mm. only, this is the only tool that they have. So what, what are you going to tell them? This is, the, they, they have so much, they're in so much pain or whatever issue or addiction or whatever. They're in so much pain or even that they don't know what to deal with it. They know this one solves it mm. for tonight yeah. and they can't risk. They can't make it through that with that. So they go, I'll just go to this one. And they're trying to, and I think God, by the way, sees that and goes, Nah, it's a bummer. I got a better plan, but I'm not mad at him. I'm not, or I'm not, I'm going to kick him out. Or I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I got a better plan for him. I'm sad that he's doing that, but I got a better plan. And I'm, I, whenever he wants to come my way, then we'd love to have him. You know, pain does drive art. And a lot of leaders who listen to this are driven people. I'm naturally a driven person. Yeah. And I remember one day I was coming back, I'd preached and, I was asking my wife, how was that? She's like, it was good. I'm like, good? Yeah, exactly. The right. old you know. ask your wife how it was good. Oh, I yeah. thought I killed it. It was yeah. like good, right? Oh, yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. like good or yeah. like good? Yeah. And she goes, no, it was good. Yeah, I'm we're like, a nightmare, dude. You we're imagine? a disaster. To healthy people, we're a nightmare, dude. I know. And she's like, well, like, she's I'm like, like, really good? I can't do this with you. Really good? <laughs> yeah. No, that's exactly where it went. Yeah, and she, she goes, goes oh, to me. She looked at me. She looked me right in the eye and she goes, I don't know what that hole is inside you, but there is no way I can possibly yeah. fill it. You would talk to me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I got like, yeah. work. I got work. Yeah, it's like a uh, ego, man. I, I I don't like if I say if I say like <laughs> the show wasn't good. Yeah. They go, well, okay. Did they boo you? They go, no. They go, did they throw something? Did they go, no? Well, did somebody tell you it wasn't good? No. Well, did somebody? What happened? Well, they just didn't. Laugh, laugh as hard as they I should. Go, have. She goes, okay, uh, you guys are a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's also, but it's all, yeah, that the, those those emotions are very human. But also, you go, oh, there's nowhere to like we're in Peterborough, Ontario tonight, and mm-hmm. uh, with a packed house of people that have chosen to like. Did we drove by the where the uh, Ottawa the where Ottawa plays the oh, hockey yeah. hockey? When you're like, oh, I wish we were there. <laughs> but you're, you're like, oh, we couldn't feel that, right? Or they, it's oh, yeah. like I never. It's like I got a good, got a good podcast, but I'm not Craig Rochelle. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm yeah, not. Yeah. I'm not. Tim the one, he has the best one. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he's, he's got a good one. Yeah, I think. So, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So pain fuels art. Yeah. Right. And oh, yeah. pain fuels a lot of leadership. That's yeah. a whole other story for another day. Yep. Yeah. You're still funny, man. Like, thank you, brother. What What is like hilarious? What's fueling that now? Because. The, I need to be noticed. I need you to pay attention to me. It's yeah. never enough. It was a cycle Yeah. before 2019. Mm-hmm. Couple of years off, yeah. rehab, deep change, repentance, you know, make amends, all that stuff. You're back. Yeah. What is driving the humor now? Well, okay. So I've always had that, like my dad, it's funny. My dad's a pastor. Yeah. And then he was a politician for a while. And I told this story where he 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 came to me one time and we were talking about he goes, John, you know, you know that we're doing the same thing, right? I go, what do you mean? He goes, all right, well, so we're all me, we're looking at society of life of culture and we don't like it. We don't, or we don't, we don't, we want to see it changed. Or we mm-hmm. and he goes, I first tried to. My dad as a pastor, he's I first tried to quote attack that by changing people's hearts, right? By the things you see, I, I don't like the way the future is going. I like to change people's hearts. And then he goes, I switched to politics. To, I'm now going to change the laws. 
to to mm-hmm. create change. And he goes, and you as a comedian, me, are doing the same thing because you're a comedian. You don't like it either. You don't like what you see on the news mm-hmm. and what you see in the culture and how you know kids are behaving and how everything. You don't like it and you want to influence it as well. And I'm just coming at it in a way that kind of with humor to kind of expose it to bring about change. And I've always been like that. The the first um, video that we ever ha- had that ever went viral was kind of put me on the map was called uh, Christian Girl Instagram. So it was this idea that like people would open their Bible and have like a highlighted like verse, cup of coffee, cup of fruit, like a purity ring, like a ornately like devised photo. And I was like, I would see that. I go, this makes me so mad because this doing this took you 30 minutes to, and you probably read the Bible for five. And I made this video called Christian girl, Instagram, instead of shaming it, exaggerating it to like, Hey, you can buy our package and we'll include Beth Moore books. And we'll, <laughs> the, the, uh, the pregnancy tests and beer bottles, we'll get rid of those and we'll replace it with uh, like all these good things from family bookstores. And it really, I was so mad at it and i made this video and i'm obviously not i don't not over exaggerating my influence but i I don't see that anymore and people and when people go that's true what he's saying is true and that and that that voice in the christian culture and there's a lot of other uh younger i feel like uh not stand-up comics but there's a lot of guys on the internet that make a lot of uh we made a video about guys who guy who cares more about his church than Jesus. It was like, come to my church, because we got our church, we have, and then it was like a everybody goes, dang. And it, and it, if you wrap it in enough humor, it'll share. If you just say, uh, Christians need to care more about church, nobody's gonna share that. Yeah. But yeah. if it's funny, it'll go. And I think now a lot of the a lot of the I just don't know. I don't, I'm like out, not out on like the Christian like culture. I just not as deep into it as like, like all yeah. the new like bands are like. So the stuff that used to make you mad the, doesn't make you mad. No, Although, I just I every, every that, Christian yeah, yeah, yeah. music video ever. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah, love yeah, that. Thank that you. Was, yeah, yeah. That was, oh, yeah. that's, that was priceless. That's a good, good song. I like too. making that stuff. I like yeah. making, uh, yeah, but some of the stuff in, that's like deep in Christianity I do, th- I do, it doesn't really make me mad anymore. So you've lost some of that fuel. In, in terms of, in terms of aimed at the faith. Material, and I th- yeah. But I think I was just, I was angry at, at a lot, I, mean, I would consider myself, people ask me all the time, like I, I'm way more of a believer now than I ever was before, way more. Wow. But I just, it, there's not, I don't have, I don't, like my church, I don't, I'm not mad at them anymore. Like they do things that I don't agree with and I think are silly. And I think maybe t- me and my girlfriend will joke about some things that we, of course, everybody does, but it doesn't right. yeah, keep me up at night. But there is obviously things about we our comedy still kind of centers around, obviously everything's family friendly yeah. and Southern culture, uh, NASCAR, country music, Nashville, and a lot, which all that stuff is hand in hand with mm-hmm. Christianity, by the way, too. So, yeah. yeah. I don't think if anybody is like, this guy's like a Christian comedian, I, I would embrace that. I got some of the artists is like, I'm not a Christian artist. I'm an artist that's Christian. Like, Stop it. It's yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. You just, I like to make what, whatever you decide that it is, whatever category you want to put it in, you're more than welcome to. One of the things I, I, I pick up, because sometimes you get familiar with someone's work. I've, I've followed you probably for, I don't know, seven, eight years. Yeah. And, you know, if you follow someone for a long time, it's like, oh, I've heard this before. I've heard this before. Yeah. You, you seem to have so much fresh stuff. Like in the book, it's like, I haven't heard 90% of these jokes and I follow you pretty closely on social. (laughs) You know, social, you're always coming up with stuff. Stories doesn't always make it to the real. And you were telling us about opening in Ottawa last night. Oh, yeah. And you just made a really good Canadian joke that kind of won over the crowd. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What is your source for new material? Because it it seems to be a fountain. It was before and it is now. Oh, yeah. Like, this seems yeah. to be like an artesian well. That's what I thought maybe about that. that like same with the, the, the pastors. Like if I get healthy, maybe I'm going to lose the, I got Lose the edge. Yeah, the opposite is going to happen. Dude. I, was t- my, I was telling my girlfriend, we were at the, we were on this hike 
we're on this hike to, gosh, I don't know, we're up at like a waterfall. Yeah. And I go, I was just sitting there watching this waterfall. I go, did she didn't make fun of me for this, but I go, dude, think about this, like these like particles of water, like their, their journey. Like it's gotta be exciting to come over here. She's like, what? I go, dude, think about if you're like in the ocean the whole time and then you get into like a river and you're like, yo, dude, check this out. And like, dude, we're gonna about to go over a what? And she's like, dude, that's the wildest thing I've ever heard. Of. She's like, what? I go, think about them. They're all up there like, dude, in a mile, we're gonna go off this. It's gonna be crazy. Have you ever been to a waterfall before? She's like, dude, I don't know what your head is. <laughs> but you get in, yeah, you get into like, you get into uh, just a, so much like, curiosity about life, about wow. Yeah. I, I pulled up to a golf course the other day in Branson, Missouri, and there was a there was a, a Ford F-150, a truck on the water. There was a pond, probably as big as this church, and there was a, and it, there was a very affluent place. And I go, everyone else would just drive by, and I go, wow, how, hold on. What did that, what's going on there? Why? And that's what, my biggest video since I've been back, not my biggest, it was, it was a, um, it was in Phoenix, and it was a, I was in a driverless Uber. So there was these cars with like these four like orbs on the corners of them, and one on the top of them. We were all just driving. Everybody's in the car driving. I go, "What's that?" They go, "What do you mean?" I go, "I've never seen that before. What is that?" And somebody goes, "Oh, it's like a they're like a, a driverless Ubers." And I go, "What?" <laughs> and everybody, not that they didn't think anything about it, they just go, they didn't consider it. And I go, hold on, what? And then we dropped, everybody dropped off the hotel. I go, what is, I found the app. I go, and I looked it up and then I Googled, got the app and I took a ride in it. But then everyone else would have been like, I don't know, they're back in the hotel watching Sports Center. Yeah, and I was yeah, so yeah. like, hold on. And I've been like that since I was a kid. Yeah. And I've been always like that in a lot of comics um, that are, like a lot of comics are suicidal and depressed and, and a lot of comics carry their mental health. It's a tough road because they, they, I, the way I describe it is like they, they ingest everything. All the, somebody is, is, doesn't feel comfortable or left out in a conversation. Somebody might not know a comic is very intuitive hmm. to everything. To, and it's mostly pain because they get to all the world of the, uh, they would make fun of the government because they could see that there's people being taken advantage by the government mm -hmm. and they can see their perspective. So they want to make this. So they they ingest everything all day on social media at the gas station, just, and sometimes it can't. Yeah. You can put it out with a rainbow and everybody goes, thank you, I feel the same. It's thank you, but sometimes it gets in there and it just gets stuck. And I think as a believer, or, or as a guy that's platform was 100% faith-based fans, I feel like a lot of the jokes I make now, I couldn't make back then. How so? Because I could, but they, they, they would just be like, what? Why? Like if I were to make a joke about like a, like rednecks at the NASCAR race, yeah. they'd be like, what? Why is he, well, I don't get that, what, what? Or like something about, Cracker Barrel, or even or, mm -hmm. or politics, or something. There you go. What? What? I thought it was all about Veggie Tales, and that's that was kind of boxed mm -hmm. in a little bit. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was boxed in. So now I can, especially with how the algorithms are, you can't. People get mad at the algorithms because you're like, nobody saw my stuff. I go, no, that's good. The algorithm <laughs> is good. So if you make something bad, it's not gonna. Every, yeah. Nobody's gonna see it. So you it's you can try whatever you want. Is that where you try stuff out? Oh well, like oh, I was, if I was first gonna try something out, I would try it on TikTok. Okay, I would try it on TikTok because that you can just put a hashtag of hashtag Peterborough and it would go just to Peterborough. Oh. My fans might see it, but it would go here. Yeah. So well, you can Peterborough. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. Like I was, I was thinking about today. You know how. Uh, uh, like Drew Barrymore and then Ashton Kutcher's, they're making an apology video. Oh, I didn't. Right, they made like apology video because they whatever screwed up on the internet. And they always, they always have like, uh, like whenever a woman wants to appear, appear like relatable in an apology video, she wear no makeup. Oh. She's like, guys, I'm just one of you. I'm like, how, do you think we're all ugly? She's like, I'm relatable. 
I'm poor like you. I'm like, <laughs> they go on all the red carpets and all uh-huh. the glam and done up and all this stuff. Right. But then when they need something from us, they got to be like, guys, listen, I'm just at my house and I'm wearing no makeup. But I would put that on TikTok and see if it, if you just want to know, like an open mic night, you want to know if the, if the bit has legs, if yeah. people relate to it. Y'all write the jokes later, but you go, have you ever been driving and somebody cuts you off and you pull up to him and you go, oh. like what, whoever's you, and everybody goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you, then you can write the joke, but yeah. Okay. So that's good. Um, we talked about the line in personal life, but what yeah. about in comedy? You're always, there's a line. Oh yeah. When do you go too far? Mm-hmm. And you've done, like, you love to call out people in the front row. Oh yeah. Oh, my live show? Oh yeah. Live well, shows. Yeah, that's the tricky about comedy. I would never apologize for a joke, I don't think. I've taken jokes down maybe once. Okay. Maybe. But what people come out to see and was what people pay us to do is approach the line. The only reason why a joke is funny is because you're saying it out loud and other people have already thought it. That's, the only, that's all comedy is. Is it goes, I think that. You ever been driving and... You see that cyclist, you're like, I wonder if I just like, mm. like <laughs> why is that funny to you? Because you. Because I'm a cyclist, but that's okay. Yeah, and you've probably yeah. already thought that. Or you've oh, had yeah. that thought's already in your head. It's like, I got to slow down for this. And, the, and But me saying it out loud is, is inflammatory. Because you're like, I can't believe you just said that. Yeah. That's what's funny about comedy. So if you want us to push up to the line, the Andy Stanley joke or whatever, yeah. and I've done it a thousand times. And you push up to if, if, and it's, by the way, if you come to the show tonight, there'll be people that thought a joke or two was across the line mm-hmm. every mm-hmm. time. But you can't, I go, what do you want to, yeah, I, I can't bat a thousand. <laughs> and last night it might have been fine, but tonight it's across the, there might be a more conservative or more, somebody might have had a personal experience in the crowd. And I go, dude, you don't, that's not how this works, which is also the, the, the beauty about being canceled because you're like, dude, you don't, you don't have that weapon anymore against me. Right. I already been canceled. You, this, you don't have any power over me. Like, oh, I can't believe you. Now you did. We would get requests and emails from everybody about everything. I can't believe John says he's a Christian. And like, you'll come to the show tonight. And you'll be like, dude, that's freaking hilarious. But you can't, <laughs> I, I'm not really a, a, a comic apologizing for it. One time I took a joke down because I made a reference and, it, and there was a, a national tragedy that happened the night before in a town that I didn't know about. That's the only time I've ever removed a joke, but I would never, I thought that was insensitive because I didn't know about that yeah. tragedy, but I would never, because t- t- people want to like publicly, people privately have come to me all the time and said things that I, that I receive. I remember one time, Somebody said, uh, we were at a show just like this, and I made a joke about, I said, I mentioned uh, something about, uh, you know how, like, your wife will text you. Like, my wife texts me. She's like, when are you going to come home? I'm like, your wife is, like, Kermit the Frog. Like, <laughs> or, like, why are, you making, why are you making your wife out to be, she doesn't sound like that. Or, like, my boss texted me, like, where do you go to be at work? I was like, because you make them sound. And so I made a joke. I was like, this guy was at the bar, and he's like, my wife, is at home. Like, when are you going to come home? I was like, dude, your wife is at home alone with nasal congestion and Down syndrome. That was the joke I made, right? And it's the first time I ever told the joke. And I remember at the show, I was at the meet and greet or something. Everybody was gone. And, and this couple waited for me and waited till everyone else and to go, hey, we love you. We've been coming to your shows for years. And we think you're hilarious. We've watched all your specials. We bought tickets. We just want to let you know that we have a daughter that has Down syndrome. And I don't think you know what you're doing by telling that joke. And that, I never told the joke again. Because yeah. that, that is someone coming to you right. in, in, in hopes. Human to human. Yes, and hopes they love you. And they're hoping for your, everyone on the internet is the opposite. Anyone who would call you out publicly is not hoping for your reconciliation or forgiveness. They're hoping for your destruction. And that is a fact. That anyone calling you out publicly for your behavior is is needs you to sink, wants you to sink. Yes, not they're not hoping for your forgiveness or for you, even for your the correcting of your behavior. Wow, 
they're hoping for your embarrassment and for your shame publicly. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. Yeah. Now, I, I mean, it's happened a, a thousand times where somebody would, come, that would email and say, hey, and you know when they're being helpful. You, you can tell. Versus, you know, you when they're, yeah, you can tell. And it's very obvious. And I think that's the reason why I've been able to have a career that has been more successful on the backside because everybody kind of get, gathered that. So yeah. one last question for you. We have a lot of communicators listening. Oh, yeah. I'm, um, how long's your set tonight? Oh, man, I'll go an hour. Depends on how the crowd's feeling. Uh -huh. I'll go probably an hour, 10 or something like that. So the thing I can't get, I can do if keynotes loose, at conferences. Maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah, you get yeah. loose. How do you memorize, learn, understand a set that goes from like 10 second bit to 30 second bit to like, oh, man. like what, what is what is the secret? I never really thought about that because that's, that's I don't know to memorize it. It's in my head all day. Is this in your head all day? So you oh, don't yeah. have like this joke goes to this joke goes to this joke or? I mean, I have, I start out talking about just the observations of like just general everybody. And I, and I also, trick of the trade, I guess, is not I have two openers and I'll listen to what jokes of theirs are working. Oh, okay. so it's like they so do kind of read the crowd a little bit. I like yeah. he, he, Caleb was making jokes last night that what they usually kill in like the south and it didn't up here. And then he would have did a joke that's kind of throwaway and it killed up here. So I was like, huh, all right. It's like in Ottawa, I think is a very little bit of a left leaning, maybe more of a progressive city. Yeah, would it be yeah, or no? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, all right. It's like being in Portland. Little. There you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right, noted. And then, but I have like, a, I don't do any shows in, in like churches or anything anymore. So there's, and there's a lot of people are in there from everywhere. I made a joke about Disney World. I made a joke about football coaching. I made a joke about uh, 20 things this week. I don't know how they got here or what they, I have no idea. So I got, I mean, I have, I'm working on my, I guess, fifth hour of, Stand up. You record an hour and then you film it, and, you, and then you polish it, and you film the next one. So I got, I got plenty to choose from, depending on what's. And but I always the the, the exciting thing about stand up is trying new jokes. Yeah, yeah. Because if you go out with all the hits, I don't feel very good after that. Well, like I want to try new stuff, see if it works. Uh huh. That's exciting. And you kind of write on the fly, is what I'm. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, we have You're to not write Seinfeld live. working for two years on the Pop Tart joke. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know if anybody really does that anymore. That's an old school way of doing it. It's more, it had us be a little bit more. He said when he went on The Tonight Show the first time, he had rehearsed that four and a half minutes 300 times live. Wow. That's crazy, dude. Wow. That's cra I don't even know if anyone that would rehearse it once. And that was now. the 80s, Yeah, right? like, yeah comedy's different. Yeah. Now a lot of people, want, they want to know that they're comics. They want to know about their lives, their podcast. They want to know, they feel like they are them versus Jerry Seinfeld. You don't know anything about his personal life. You don't even know if he's married. He doesn't even care if you do know. And you, maybe that's, but that's, yeah. Yeah. But I like, if I got something new I'm thinking about, I mean, I, I'd write it down on my phone. And then I'm all day thinking, I can't wait to tell this joke. Wow. And then I live in Nashville, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if I'm free, there's an uh, open mic. And you go try it. Now, this, this theater is going to be full tonight, so I can't bring a new, new joke out there. Now, I might talk about Ottawa, and because they were kind of roasting Peterborough, so there might be a little bit there. I tell, tell us how you opened Ottawa last night. It was actually funny. As a, as a Canadian who's in the middle politically, oh, yeah. uh, I found it funny. No, I said, I could, okay, there was a, um, there was a, what's it called? The joke was that there, I got to the airport and I saw a parliament, uh, immersive parliament experience. Right. Right. So I, and that's like, I would do that joke in America. They saw, I go, well, that's, I just saw, you know, those little cards that you pull out of like the tourist spots. Uh -huh, and it was uh -huh. like whitewater rafting, you know, and there's immersive part. I guess that's the capital. Yeah. That's the capital. Yeah. And I got immersive parliament experience. I go, it was pretty cool. They, uh, I go, they seized my business, monitored my bank account and told me I had to get the vaccine. It was a like, crazy. <laughs> and <they're, laughs> But, but that what's, what's funny about humor is that like that joke you go, comedians, comedians, it's unfair. Comedians get to say whatever they want. I go, uh -huh. no, we don't. We're the, literally the opposite. Y you, it, you make it go, hmm. not me. If I go, what's the deal with all the Dutch population of Ottawa? That's not, Yeah. they were like, what? Yeah. It doesn't, it's not true. It's not a true thing. It doesn't go anywhere. They just go, what? Like, it doesn't, it's not offensive. 
nor mm-hmm. is it gravitational because nobody goes, ah, we don't, that, that, joke, that joke doesn't make sense. So like all the things about church, like I, I'm in awe, not any kind of controversy, but this week we're going through this huge thing because I posted on my po- uh, podcast a clip about tipping. I go, tipping oh, yeah. is out of control. I go, tipping's out of control. I go, everybody asked for 20, 30, 30. I went to a, a 35% was on the, on the iPad. Mm-hmm. And I go, that's crazy. And then my podcast producer goes, Jesus only wants 10. I saw that. That and, was funny. And Stephanie wants, and dude, it's so. Jesus wants 10. What does Stephanie, Stephanie want? Stephanie wants 25? 20. This is ridiculous. Yeah. And it's so, it's people are so angry because they're so, it moves that and like, YouTube, they don't gauge positive or negative comments to boost up videos. What do they gauge? Comments. Mm -hmm. So if you watch it and are moved enough to comment, that wins. So why, why, if that wasn't true about tipping, everybody would just leave it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't hundred percent, right? They go, I don't know. We should be tipping 50%, but everyone else clearly is so like, and you just verbalized what they were already thinking. If any comic is going to do great and have any kind of success or career longevity, it's going to be voicing not your own issues or hangups or, or trauma. It's, it's helping. There's, there's 2000 people that are going to come to the show tonight that are, that are carry lives that are heavy. Mm-hmm. And I remember Tim Hawkins, you know, Tim Hawkins. Oh yeah. yeah. One of the greats. One of the greats. Oh, it's still crushing it, by the way. It's still bigger than he was before. I remember going to one of his shows, and uh, he was joking about a CPAP machine. And he goes, man, I put this thing on. where he's like, that really kills intimacy, doesn't it? He's like, <laughs> and he's like, I'm uh, whatever the Star Wars character. The uh, uh, Dar- He's like, I feel like Darth Vader over there. He's like, all right, so it's time to strap in. And he was, and I could, I saw this older couple <clears throat> that was sitting there, and she was like, ribbing him about it and they were she was crying laughing <laughs> and it's a great joke but i go dude 35 40 bucks that they paid you don't understand the, you don't understand the burden that you've lifted from them cuz that is a real issue in their bedroom mm-hmm. it has mm-hmm. to be otherwise they i mean he was undone <laughs> and she was bawling cuz you go cuz that is a real he goes it's shameful for him to say, hey, you got sleep apnea, you got to wear this appliance. Yeah. Everywhere he travels, he's got to take it out of TSA. Take it's it out embarrassing. of TSA, you see him all the time. Yeah, it's embarrassing. And his wife is letting, he, and it's a source of, and she, all the issues that that could possibly create that I can't imagine, but then, then he verbalizes that and lifts that off of their shoulders and it's like, there's nothing better for us and for them. If, that, if comedy is done well, that's what it's for. John, I want to thank you for you, your gift of comedy, also for making us laugh, but also for this. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is, I hope the dialogue in the future becomes more like this. And thank you for being so Forward open, written so by Larry the Cable Guy. That's right. Oh, yeah. Good man. <laughs> also, uh, also one of the best doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if people want to track with you, what platform or thing would you send them oh, to? Oh, man. Well, I said TikTok's where I try all my new jokes. So I wouldn't go there first. Uh, don't go to Google either. That's a joke. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. You can find it all there. John Christ. Uh, should get, whatever fl- platform you use, I'm probably there. Thanks, John. Absolutely great to be here.